In 19th century New England, there was an outbreak of tuberculosis known as consumption, which ravaged through Rhode Island and other parts of the country. Tuberculosis, often shortened to TB, was an illness that was usually fatal to victims at that time. One common symptom was a significant weight loss, giving the impression that life was being slowly sucked out of the patient. Very little medically accurate information was known about the disease at that time. The Brown family, consisting of George and Mary Brown and their children, were hard-working and well-respected farmers. Nothing could prepare or protect them from what was about to decimate the family. Mercy Lena Brown lived in Exeter, Rhode Island. Dubbed Deserted Exeter, or simply one of the border towns, it was largely a subsistence farming community with barely fertile soil. Farmers heaped stones into tumble-down walls, and rows of corn swerved around the biggest boulders. In the late 19th century, Exeter, like much of New England, was even more sparsely populated than usual. Civil War casualties had taken their toll on the community, and the new railroads and the promise of richer land to the west lured many young men away. By 1892, the year Lena died, Exeter's population had dipped to just 961, from a high of more than 2,500 in 1820. Farms were abandoned, many of them later to be seized and burned by the government. Some sections resembled a ghost town. The Browns, living on the eastern edge of town, probably on a modest homestead of 30 to 40 stony acres, began to succumb to the disease in December 1882. Lena's mother, Mary Eliza, was the first. Lena's sister, Mary Olive, a 20-year-old dressmaker, died the next year. It was a terrible end, often drawn out over years. A rapid high fever, a hacking cough with blood-flecked saliva and a visible wasting away of the body. The emaciated figure strikes one with terror, reads one 18th century description. The forehead covered with drops of sweat, the cheeks painted with a livid crimson, the eyes sunk, the breath offensive, quick and laborious, and the cough so incessant as to scarce allow the wretched sufferer time to tell his complaints. Indeed, one historian states, symptoms progressed in such a way that it seemed like something was draining the life and blood out of the victim. People dreaded the disease without understanding it. Though Robert Koch had identified the tuberculosis bacterium in 1882, news of the discovery did not penetrate rural areas for some time, and even if it had, drug treatments wouldn't become available until the 1940s. The year Lena died, one physician blamed tuberculosis on drunkenness and want among the poor. 19th century cures included drinking brown sugar dissolved in water and frequent horseback riding. If they were being honest, one historian noted, the medical establishment would have said, there's nothing we can do and it's in the hands of God. After Mary Olive succumbed to the illness, 
a tender obituary from a local newspaper hinted at what she endured. The last few hours she lived was of great suffering, yet her faith was firm and she was ready for the change. The whole town turned out for her funeral and sang one sweetly solemn thought, a hymn that Mary Olive herself had selected. Within just a few years, Lena's brother Edwin, a store clerk whom one newspaper columnist described as a big husky young man, started to sicken as well and left for Colorado Springs hoping the climate would improve his health. Lena, who was just a child when her mother and sister died, didn't fall ill until nearly a decade after they were buried. Her tuberculosis was the galloping kind, which meant that she might have been infected much earlier but remained asymptomatic for years, only to fade fast after showing the first signs of the disease. A doctor attended her in her last illness and informed her father that further medical aid was useless. Her January 1892 obituary was much terser and less romantic than her sister's. Miss Lena Brown, who has been suffering from consumption, died Sunday morning. As Lena languished on her deathbed, her brother, after a brief remission, was taking a turn for the worse. Edwin had returned to Exeter from the Colorado resorts in a dying condition, according to one account. If the good wishes and prayers of his many friends could be realized, friend Eddie would speedily be restored to perfect health, another newspaper wrote. But some neighbors, likely fearful for their own health, weren't content with prayers. Several approached George Brown, the children's father, and offered their ideas on the cause of the recent tragedies. Could it not be possible, even reasonable, that an unseen diabolical force was preying on his family? Indeed, it could be that one of the three Brown women wasn't dead after all instead was constantly and secretly feasting on the living tissue and blood of Edwin, as the Providence Journal later summarized. If the offending corpse, the journal uses the term vampire in some stories but the locals seem not to, was discovered and destroyed, then Edwin would undoubtedly recover. The neighbors then asked permission to exhume the bodies in order to check for fresh blood in their hearts. In the larger picture, the reaction over Mercy Brown's death and the takeover of consumption in the small town of Exeter was part of a much larger panic in New England. In Rhode Island, Eastern Connecticut and Vermont, many townspeople were falling prey to the Red Death, and quite a few of them were blaming their deceased relatives. A lot of these suspected vampires were dug up and burned, with Mercy Brown and the case of Frederick Ransom in Vermont being one of the most widely reported. George Brown, who had no wish to arouse his neighbor's anger, reluctantly gave permission. On the morning of March the 17th, 1892, a party of men dug up the bodies, as the family doctor and a journal correspondent looked on. 
George was absent for unstated but very understandable reasons. Mary Eliza and Mary Olive had both been buried, and so a group of men armed with shovels dug tirelessly through the frozen earth and brought their coffins up to ground level. The caskets were opened to reveal that the bodies had decayed over time, and after nearly a decade, Lena's sister and mother were barely more than bones. Mercy's body had not been buried due to the cold weather of the Rhode Island winter, as with other people who died during the freezing temperatures, Lena's coffin was stored above ground with the intention of being buried once the ground had thawed, bearing in mind that she had been dead only a few months. Opening Lena's coffin, the onlookers were shocked to see that her body was in a very good state of preservation, and some sources say her body was not in the position it had been buried, and that her fingernails and hair had grown significantly. There was no decay. Upon further examination, liquid blood was found in her heart and other areas of her body. The body was in a fairly well-preserved state, the correspondent later wrote. The heart and liver were removed, and in cutting open the heart, clotted and decomposed blood was found. During this impromptu autopsy, the doctor again emphasized that Lena's lungs showed diffused tuberculosis germs. Another thing that contributed greatly to the belief that a dead relative could haunt a family from beyond the grave was the concept of death at that time in history. At the time, decomposition was viewed as the only sure-fire sign of death, and the heart was understood as the most important organ in the body, the source of life itself. At this point, many of the villagers had heard all about the Mercy Brown vampire. They claimed to have seen Lena walking through the graveyard and neighboring fields at night. Why they hadn't mentioned this earlier is unknown. Lena was deemed the culprit responsible. The villagers burned her heart and liver on a nearby rock. The remnants of her heart were mixed with water and given to Edwin to drink. He died less than two months later. Still, no one can explain how her body wasn't in the same position as it was when it was buried. After being violated, Mercy's body was buried in Chestnut Hill Cemetery behind the Baptist Church in Exeter. 
Chestnut Hill Cemetery is still in use today, and here lies the dust of Lena undisturbed. She rests beside the brother who was made to eat her heart, and the father who was compelled to let it happen. Perhaps it was wise to let them have their way, since George Brown, apparently not prone to tuberculosis, had to coexist with his neighbors well into the next century. He died in 1922. Lena hasn't left entirely. She is said to frequent a certain bridge in town, where the strong smell of roses manifests. She murmurs in the cemetery, say EVP researchers, who leave tape recorders there to capture her voice. She is rumored to visit the terminally ill and to tell them that dying isn't so bad. So, in this fragrant and considerate way, she returns to us not as a specter to drain life, but to give us hope of an eternal one. Well, my dear viewers, I hope you enjoyed that presentation. Um, let me know what you think. Is that sort of uh, is that sort of story up your alley or, or not? I quite enjoy uh, true sort of um, cases like that, um, and it's it's weird to think that it wasn't that long ago. It was only really over a hundred years ago, and it's not that long when you think of a human lifespan that they believed in vampires and were digging up bodies and thinking that they were, you know, coming at night and visiting their relatives to drain their life force out of them. And I know for a fact there's people today who believe in vampires. So, yeah, the human psyche is, is very interesting, and that's why I find these cases fascinating. There they had an illness, TB, uh, a disease, TB. They didn't know how to cure it they didn't really know much about it so to them they had to look for a supernatural reason for it and because the symptoms appeared to be a draining of the life force and of course they they looked to what could be draining that life force very, very interesting anyway i hope you like that uh, story and um who knows what i'll be doing next well i know what i'm going to be doing next for patreon most certainly it's a case that someone uh, suggested to me uh, there's been a few of my Patreon viewers have suggested it. Well, I, indeed, I get a lot of uh, suggestions from viewers, both on YouTube and here on Patreon, and uh, I intend to cover as many as I can, uh, especially the ones I think that you guys will find interesting. And the next case I think you will find interesting, uh, I remember it from many years back. I, I read about this case, and it, it held my interest. I kept thinking about it from time to time. Um, Purely because uh, the the killer, the perpetrator, thought he had eluded justice. Uh, well, he thought so. That might give you a clue as to what case it is. Um, I won't say too much about it, but uh, it, it is indeed uh, a tragic case. But at the same time, uh, eerily interesting um, from the point of view of him being found so many years after the murders. and. Uh, yeah, and that satisfaction of having him brought to justice, that closure, where there's not some killer on the loose who's evaded uh, jail time um, and has managed to live out his days in peace without ever being convicted. At, at least we have that closure. You're probably, some of you now thinking, who is this? Maybe some of you have already cottoned on and possibly the ones who suggested it recently will definitely <laughs> have cottoned on. Anyway, I will leave that for you to guess which one it is, and um, won't give away too much. It'll spoil the surprise, won't it? 
Okay, next subject on the ramble. So I decided to depress myself and go and, and, go and have a look at, at what's on YouTube trending. So, what do we see here? Uh, best proposal ever. No idea about what that's supposed to be. Which makeup counter gives the best custom makeup? Um, I don't know what's going on there. But look how many views. 1.2 million views in 18 hours. This is what our youth are being encouraged to watch. Shane Dawson, exclusive interview. His makeup line and more. Uh, oh my God, that's all I can say. Oh my God, uh, how many views out? Incredible amount of views in a short time. Reacting to ourselves after surgery. Oh my God, a couple of mimbos. 2.8 million views a day ago. Isn't that crazy? Emma Chamberlain goes sh boxing and shopping in LA. And this is like, you know, yeah, as I say, this is what the CEO of YouTube wants our youth of today to watch. It's what they're encouraging. They're not encouraging my videos. They they have she has specifically said that videos that didn't have have sort of horror content or crime content, they're never going to be allowed to trend anymore. That that's you know. So this is what we're having instead trending. <laughs> they don't want reality. Uh, they want this uh, rubbish. <laughs> I have to say, it. a lot of this is just rubbish, isn't it? Uh, a day in my life. Yeah. Uh, we bought 10 products on Wish for only a dollar. 1.7 million views in one day. Oh my God. It's just, I don't know. I'm speechless. Dropping watermelons versus trampoline from 500 centimeters. I hate these sort of videos. I detest them. 600 views in, 600,000 views in 20 hours. Absolutely insanity plus, isn't it? Uh, what is that? This is LNS official baby gender reveal. I have no idea what that's about, what all that is about, but 4.5 million views in two days. My goodness. Yeah, yeah I'm getting depressed. It's working. <laughs> I'm getting my fill of depression. The Sims, okay, some, some like that. They have the younger generation accidentally breaking a $1,500 computer monitor. 600,000 views a day ago. I mean, this... This is what people are watching. There's a lot of dumbing down going on, my viewers. A lot of dumbing down going on. Yeah, now that shouldn't even be on. Diver finds GoPro with drowning victim's last moments. I mean, how distressing is that for the family of the victim? They they allow that on trending, but not my videos. My videos get demonetized, and that that is even allowed on. You know, I just find it... Uh, very strange, very strange, and I'm not going to watch any more because it's, uh, yeah, it did the job. But now, the reason why I've showed you that, there is a reason why. There is a motive, and I hate this stuff. Used a hot knife to sculpt foam. This is my 1.8 million views in a day. Why do people watch this? I don't understand it. I just don't understand their mindset. Absolutely crazy. Is it some rigged thing? I don't know. Can't watch it anymore, but the reason why I brought this to your attention is so I can show you what's sort of going on behind the scenes with Google and YouTube. Uh, uh, this might surprise you. Check this out. Uh, a friend of mine on Facebook sent me this. Uh, these screenshots. A friend of hers sent to them. Uh, you can see on her smartphone she has Google Rewards down there. It's marked in in a red circle there. Uh, and what they do is basically Google pays you to to answer questions like a survey type of format and um, they will pay you for doing that. So this is to me really a, a form of brainwashing with a sort of reward for giving them the answers that they want. So what they're basically doing is prodding you in the direction they want you to go. You know, you'll see what I mean. It's all going to become very clear in a minute. Um, to me, it's it's very biased because the, you, you'll see. Check out the next screenshot. So here we see the, the actual uh, questions they have on Google Opinion Reward. So you're going to get rewarded for uh, basically having an opinion that Google wants you to have. So here we go. What if any... Now, but by the way, this is my video 
The Embalmed Girl Mannequin, La Pasqualita, The Corpse Bride, by Obsolete Oddity, a year ago, the narrated version. I did a silent version as well. So they're asking the uh, the subject, the person who is, you know, getting rewarded for, for these answers, what they think about my th- uh, thumbnail image. So what, if anything, do you dislike about this video recommendation to watch next? Note video doesn't play, da da da. And here we go, you see, see what they're going, it's not a positive thing. They're not saying, what do you like about this video recommendation? They're, they're saying, what do you dislike? So they've already put it into your mind. They want a negative reply. They don't want a positive reply, a negative. So uh, this is to me not neutral. They've already sort of led you down that, that road to uh, a negative answer. So let's see what the list of possible answers are. So here we go. Here are the uh, check all answers that apply. So you can answer as many as you want, really. Go for it. Go for the negative <laughs> answers. So unrelated to video A. Okay, who cares? And how many thumbnails are unrelated? I mean, I don't think that th- this thumbnail is actually unrelated. It's a depiction of a woman who is in a morgue, you know, possibly embalmed. So anyway, but that's that's purely, uh, that's okay that, that you can answer that if you don't think it's related. But now we're getting into the negative part. The, the next one is looks junky or trashy. Again, go and look on trending. You, you'll, you'll see enough of that. Um, and the other one, it looks misleading or sensationalistic. <laughs> it looks overly sexual. It looks violent, gory, or gross, uninteresting to me, or none of the above. Now, do you notice, you know, that people may have opinions about that, but if you don't have an opinion, if you think the thumbnail looks good, you're not given any positive options to tick. You know, there's no option to say, I think the thumb- thumbnail looks fantastic. It really suits the video. I think it looks very interesting. It wants, makes me want to watch the video. They're not asking you that. They want you to answer in the negative. And that's what I find biased. And uh, But it's, as I say, it's typical of uh, Google and YouTube. Uh, you know, they, they try to influence the, the young generation into what they want you to watch and what, and they try to also influence you as to what you shouldn't be watching. In my opinion, my opinion, YouTube, okay. But what do you think about this? Do you see any positive answers there that could be checked out there isn't anything positive is there so anyway i thought i'd have a whinge about that and at the end on a, to end on a cheery note we have a blooper <laughs> or a few bloopers actually anyway my friend i'm going to head off uh, now and uh, leave the bloopers at the end for you to have a laugh at but uh, thanks for being with me and thanks for listening to me have a whinge <laughs> take care god bless see you next time Then Edwin, then Edwin would, then Edwin would, ah, uh, Edwin would, then Edwin would, then Edwin would, 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 <laughs> then Edwin would undoubtedly, re- then Edwin would, uh, <laughs>